So what most painting tutorials do not show you is the instructor really working and reworking the painting. You know, they put a color in and they have to change it and they come back and they change it again. They paint something in and they paint it out and they come back and paint it in again or the drawings off and they have to adjust it. That kind of stuff is either edited out or they've painted the painting before and worked out all the kings or it's a subject matter they're really familiar with and can nail everything right off the bat. But the truth is most of this working and reworking with oil painting is how most paintings go. Well, I actually showed all of this in a tutorial on my Patreon page. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about it and why my students loved it. All right, if you're new to the channel, then welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. So I have watched a lot of painting video tutorials. That's pretty much how I learned how to oil paint. And I've filmed a lot more tutorials myself. I've filmed over 70 that are on my Patreon page right now. And oil painting tutorials are an interesting thing because, you know, definitely as an instructor, I'm trying the best I can to make the student have the best learning experience as possible, to make things as easy to understand as possible. And to do that, it's helpful to put things in steps. You know, you got step one, you get this, and you move to step two, you get that, and then this and that, and then the end product. In general, that's just how people like to learn. It keeps them from getting confused. And a lot of times I will do a practice painting before filming just so things go a lot smoother. I'm always worried thinking like, oh, I don't want to confuse the student. You know, if they see me painting something in and then I paint it out, then I come back and I go, wait, no, I want to paint it again. Or oh, I need to change this color. I need to work that color. I can see how it could be confusing, but it is actually a better representation of what it's like to oil paint. It's what separates oil painting from other mediums for me. You know, you can't really rework and, and change the paint once it's on the canvas and watercolors and acrylics the same you can with oils. And so I like to lean into that. And I find it very helpful to put paint on knowing that I can change it and manipulate it as I go. It also helps me paint with more freedom because I know I really can't make a mistake because if I do make a mistake, I can just fix it, which allows me to paint with more confidence. And I think the more confidence you have as you're painting, it just, it's just gonna create a better painting. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through this painting tutorial I did. It's a master copy of a Edgar Payne painting. I just bought one of his books that has really great high quality photos of all of his paintings and I am loving it. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna check it out too. So once it's all drawn in, I start by putting in the sky. And with all skies, there's gonna be a gradient. It's gonna be darker and cooler up top. And as I get closer to the horizon, it's gonna get lighter and warmer. Now, once I painted the sky, I realized I made it too yellow too quick going down towards the horizon. So I wanted to work in some more blue. So I mixed a sky color that was a little more blue than what I had and I painted it into that wet paint that was already on the canvas. I wasn't necessarily painting over it as much as painting into it to change the color. Now I worked the sky a lot more than I thought I would this early on in the painting. And I realized that the only way I'm gonna be able to pull this off and get the colors correct is if I go through the entire scene and put something down for each of the major parts so that I can use those and compare. I always say use other parts of the painting to help you with the parts that you're having trouble with. It's like a puzzle. The more pieces you have, the easier it is to solve for the missing pieces. For example, now that I have the sky and the sails blocked in, I can use that relationship of the sky and the sails to compare. I can compare my relationship with the references relationship. In doing this, I see I need to change the color of the sail. And now that the sail is dialed in better, I can use it as a reference for other things. Like I can see the big sail needs to be a lot more lighter than the smaller sail. Now, as I'm doing this in my mind, I'm never thinking that one section is done. I never deem any section is finished until the painting is finished. At any point in time in the painting, I could go to a certain section and adjust it. Like I don't know for sure if the color and value of this small sail is correct. I might have to adjust it later on. And if I do, I'm also gonna have to adjust my bigger sail because I put my bigger sail in based on what I had with my smaller sail. So if I change one, I'm probably gonna have to change the other. This is why I never stay on one section for too long because I don't wanna spend a lot of time over developing one section if I'm just gonna have to change it and adjust it later on. I move around the painting making small little adjustments as I go. I let the painting come to me instead of trying to finish it in one pass. 
So here I go back and I change the small sale again. And as I dial in these sales more, I'm also looking at the relationship between the sales and the sky. It's all about relationships. It's always about comparing everything to everything else. And I can see here that I need to go back and adjust my sky color again. It needs to be a little bit more of like a greenish blue down here at the bottom. And that makes me realize I need to darken the top of the sky so I can have that good gradient. And doing all that makes me change this small sale once again. And that adjustment on the small sale makes me realize I have to adjust my larger sale again. Once I've moved my eyes around the painting a bunch of times and checked and double checked and stood back and like, all right, is this lighter than that? Is this darker than that? Does this relationship work? Does that relationship work? And once I feel like all the big relationships work, then I feel comfortable putting in details. The last thing you wanna do is start putting in details on relationships that are off and wrong because what's gonna happen is you're gonna to have to paint away all those details you spent all that time on to paint in the big relationships again. So the way that this tutorial came about is I was going to paint this for a tutorial and I figured I'll, I'll paint it once and film it and hey, if it goes good, then I will use it. If it doesn't, if I kind of have to make too many changes and make mistakes and adjust and everything, I'll just film it again. But as I was doing it, I was actually enjoying explaining what I was doing. And again, I felt it was a more realistic representation of what the painting process is really like. And I feel for people starting out, it could be misleading to see all of these painters painting these tutorials and doing these paintings and they're always coming out perfect and they're always mixing up the exact right color right off the bat and every single brushstroke works exactly how they want it. And there's not a lot of fussing and change and adjusting. When you see that, just remember that is a little misleading. You know, they could have edited stuff out. This could be the third time they painted a painting or it could be a subject matter that they're so comfortable with and so good at that they can pretty much nail it right off the bat. But I can guarantee you with any painter when they're working on something that's challenging them and pushing them, they're gonna be going through this process of adjusting. And when I posted it, I actually had a few students comment and say, how much they enjoyed watching these adjustments being made. One, it said it made me more relatable that I make mistakes and have to fix them during painting, which again, that's like every single painter, but it made them feel better with their own work and how many times they have to adjust and fix things in their own work. So if you wanna see the full version of this tutorial and see all these changes being made, check out my Patreon page. I'll have a link to that in the description below. Now the main focus of this master copy for me was like getting the right colors. If you struggle with color mixing, I have the color mixing video of my Foundations of Oil Painting course available for free. I have a link to that in the description below if you wanna get a good solid foundation of color mixing. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at 4 of 43 I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.